Hey guys, it's going Duty here, and today we're going to talk about the Velisca Axe Murder House case. But before we jump into that, if you could smash that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, it just lets YouTube know that you like my content and would like to see more of it, so everyone wins. Right, the Velisca Axe Murder House. Now a haunted house attraction, preserved as it was on that fateful night that eight people, two adults and six children were brutally murdered with an axe. June 10th, 1912 was the date that would change the humble town of Velisca forever. There are many theories as to what happened that night, how it went down, who did it. However, to this day, it remains unsolved. I will just preface this case with this though. I believe I know who did it, but we'll get onto that towards the end of the video. So a warm summer's night, June the 10th. The Moore family, consisting of Joe Moore, Sarah Moore, and their four children, Herman, Mary, Arthur, and Paul, as well as two of their friends, Ina and Lena Sillinger, who were staying the night, were sound asleep in their beds after spending the evening at their local church as part of the Children's Day program which was planned by Sarah herself. The following morning, Mary Peckham, neighbor of the Moors, noticed that the household was still. Now this is very odd for the Moors household as it is usually bursting with life from the crack of dawn. Mary decided to knock on the door at 7 a.m. after letting the Moors chickens out. There was no answer. She tried the door handle. It was locked. So she called Joe's brother, who she knew had a key to the household. Now Ross, Joe's brother, after shouting from the outside with no answer, decided to let himself into the property using his spare key. Mary waited in the doorway while Ross investigated. He opened the door to the spare bedroom on the ground floor and was greeted with the sight of the Stillinger sisters brutally murdered. Immediately, he told Mary to get the police. He searched the rest of the house and in every bed, a deceased mutilated corpse. The entire Moore household and the Stillinger sisters wiped out overnight. Now it would take police three hours to arrive and hold down the crime scene. In this time news spread like wildfire and over a hundred people came to the house to witness the massacre. Walking in, looking at the bodies and contaminating the crime scene heavily. One person even took a piece of Joe Moore's skull as a keepsake. When police finally locked down the crime scene naturally it was a mess and it probably deeply affected the pursuit of the killer who by this time already had hours of time to make their escape. The bloodhounds, useless due to the contamination. However, enough evidence was left to deduce what happened that night. Now, firstly, I have read two different scenarios as to how the killer or killers entered the house. The first, the door was unlocked. Not unusual in a small town, especially for a family so beloved by their community. The killer enters the house and puts the oil lamp on a very low light burn. Goes straight up to the master bedroom almost as if they knew the layout of the house. Now before I get into the murders let me tell you about the more evidence-based entry and in my opinion the more sinister. So police actually found two used cigarette butts in the attic implying that the killer or killers were hiding out waiting for the Moores family to return and go to sleep before committing the murders. Then once the family was asleep, climbed down and began the killings. So those are the entries. Either way, the matriarch and patriarch of the household died first. Probably because if anyone was going to wake up and fight off the killers, it's, it's going to be the adults, isn't it? Joe Moore was killed first. Interestingly, the only victim to be killed with the sharp side of the axe. This potentially implies that he was the main target if this was a targeted killing. Then the wife, killed by blunt force trauma to the head by the blunt side of the axe. Then the Moore's children, then finally the Stillinger sisters downstairs. It is theorized that Lena Stillinger was actually awake, the only one to be awake during the killings. This is because there were defensive wounds on her arm and also she was strewn across the bed, almost as if she'd been pulled out by her feet. Her nightgown was pulled up over her waist 
waist and she had no underwear on. These were thrown underneath the bed. Forensic examination determined that the girl was not sexually assaulted. Strangely, a slab of bacon wrapped in cloth was found in the room, which some have theorized to be a mock vagina. However, no hairs or fluids were found on the meat. The axe and lamp were also found in the Stillinger's bedroom, implying that this was the last destination of the killings. However, it is thought that after successfully killing each of the eight victims, the killer returned upstairs to beat both Mr. and Mrs. Moore's heads to a pulp with the axe. So ferocious were the swings that a massive gash in the wall can be seen where the killer threw the axe above their own head and caught the wall with force. The killer pulled the curtains in the house, covered the body's faces with sheets and clothing, and also made themselves some food, ate it, then left the house, locking it with Joe Moore's own personal key. It is also to be noted that the axe that was used in the killings was actually Joe Moore's axe. So that is the Liska murder house killings. As I said, no one was ever sentenced for the killings, but there were certainly some suspects. The first suspect was Frank Jones, a local businessman who was a direct rival of Joe Moore's. Now, interestingly, Joe actually worked for Frank for seven years before setting up his own rival company to Frank's. Rumors also circulated that Joe was having an affair with Frank Jones's daughter-in-law. However, this was never proven. So it's safe to say that they definitely had beef, but would it be enough to massacre a family and two little girls that weren't even part of your arch nemesis's family? Probably not, let's be honest. So Frank was no longer considered a suspect. The second suspect, and personally, the person that I believe to be responsible, but that is just a theory based on the evidence. So let's hear the evidence, shall we? So the second suspect is Lynn Kelly. Now this guy has some questionable history. He traveled to spread the word of Christ from England. He had a history of sexual deviancy and mental issues. He was in town the night of the murders after being invited to teach at the children's day program. Left at 5.15 a.m. on the morning of the murders. He was left-handed, which blood splatter in the house dictates the killer was left-handed. He apparently, about a week after the murder, handed bloody clothes to a lawn to be cleaned. He had history with the Moores family, would be seen gazing at them while at church by other churchgoers, had a history of asking young women and girls to pose naked for him, thus the sexual deviancy, and took a weird fascination in the case when police were investigating. When the police pressed him on this and his whereabouts the night of the murders, he claimed to be walking outside the house and could hear thuds of the axe. I mean, come on. He wasn't detained based on the fact he was mentally ill and had a very meek stature of five foot two, which raised doubts as to whether he was the killer. Until a few years later, when he was arrested for being sexually indecent with a woman who he had interviewed to be his receptionist. This put Kelly back on the radar. Finally, in 1917, Kelly was arrested for the murders and police got him to confess to it all. However, he pretty much instantly claimed that he was coerced into the confession through police brutality and the jury, over the course of two trials, acquitted him. Now, there was also a string of axe murders across the Southern Pacific Railroad, all with incredibly similar, if not identical, MOs to the Velisca axe murders. Prime suspect in those killings was a man called William Mansfield. However, payroll records gave him a solid alibi, that he was in Illinois at the time of the Velisca murders. There was also Henry Lee Moore, no relation to the Moore family, who was a suspect in the killings due to the fact he murdered his mother and grandmother with an axe several months after the Velisca murders with similarities to the Velisca case. So there we go, guys. That was the Velisca axe murders house case. What do we think? Who do you personally think was the axe murderer. If you enjoyed that, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. It really helps me out. I'll see you again very soon. Sweet one. Geese.